Interface, and today we're going to speak about UBI, who is uh, who stands for Universal Basic Income. In front of the Corona situation, many countries are proposing alternatives or scale down um, distribution of resources so people can can uh, buy food and so on and so forth. So let me start. Uh, with Stacy because she was the first online and then she can give us an overview of what's happening in Congress at the federal level and then we can uh, we can after that uh, go maybe more locally with Diane on New York City. So Stacy, you were uh, mentioning about the possibilities in uh, in, in, in the U.S. so having some kind of UBI? Yeah, so at Income Movement, we really focus on all, what we think of as kind of all three strata of a movement. We think about um, grassroots engagement. We think about thought leadership. How can we kind of unite people across, um, uh, you know, academics and leaders across basic income together? And then we also think of um, the political side. And ultimately, when all three of those things are in harmony is when we have... Um, uh, the, the biggest effect on uh, on uh, really impacting the legislation that gets passed at the federal level all the way down to local. And right now with, with um, the coronavirus crisis, what we see is a pretty significant activation on all three of those levels. Um, specifically right now uh, with the goal of influencing and affecting Congress to get some form of emergency um, universal basic income past. What we're, what we're hearing in, um, in our connections with people on the Hill is that right now, based on just where Congress is, um, the people that are, that are um, sitting in Congress, their general set feeling about um, making, giving payments in a universal way where everybody gets um, payments during this crisis um, really is almost a non-starter. There's not a lot of support for that. And you see it um, in the first round of the CARES Act that the, the one-time payment that went out was, was what we call means tested, where, um, where you had to meet certain thresholds of income in order to qualify. Um, we anticipate in the next round that that will likely still be the case. Those, um, those thresholds may increase. It may be that um, you can, you know, households and individuals can, can make more money and still be eligible. But, um, but we do anticipate that there will be some form of means testing involved in um, any additional uh, cash payments to people as part of um, the next phase of stimulus. So right now what we're really fighting for um, uh, at all three of those levels, that kind of grassroots thought leadership and um, kind of political influence side is to get Congress right now to do ongoing payments. So if there's going to be means testing, let's increase, you know, the threshold. Let's make sure people who were left out of the first, um, the first round of stimulus are included. People like dependents, you know, college students who are, de who are dependents um, uh, by their parents to help get, you know, financial aid and other things to, uh, during college. They were, they were not included in the one-time payment because they're dependents. They're not considered um, uh, kind of independent adults. And a variety of, a variety of other people were left. Yeah, I mean, in, in New York, it's very complicated because we have all the people who are undocumented who have no access to any any resources, any income. And it, and you have immigrant family who have been banned from receiving uh and then you have um, people who are not necessarily uh, having all the bank possibilities and they didn't get the check yet. So it, it's, it seems to be much more easier if everybody is getting it than having this, this half process story. So I, I, I don't know why that's not going through. And it, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, clientele politics Then I'm, I'm not getting it. Yeah, and I think, you know, philosophically, there's, there's, we definitely have in our society, the, the basic philosophy around um, uh, who deserves what, and how should our government be fiscally responsible in, in, in how we distribute funds. Um, a lot of the time that doesn't necessarily translate into the corporate space and, um, and the, the, the corporate um, uh, gifts that we give away, but um, but certainly on an individual level, we we face that uh, a pretty steep hill in helping people rethink um, the value of people uh, as part of a larger society, um, as well as 
um, trying to remove this who deserves um, who deserves the support because um, we know we're all here together in the society. We're all making it better. We're all um, uh, making sure that communities are safe, that economies are running. Um, and, and as soon as you start to delineate and make decisions about that, you one, add a lot of administrative um, hurdles. And a lot of political games, because who's meeting the line? We see with the district. I mean, it's a lot of political discussion who have, I mean, who take energy from the whole, the whole process. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. That's right. If there is something very, you know, the other, the other component to this that is so important is the, the distribution mechanism. And, and David, you're basically bringing up such an important part of the conversation is how do we actually get funds to people? And when we tie it to things like the IRS, or social security as the um, as the method for distribution, things become very complicated very quickly. And it's it's you know um, Re Representative Tlaib's ABC Act and um, and others uh, within Congress have outlined um, proposals for ongoing payments going um, via preloaded debit cards. And, um, and things that will make it so that people who are bankless, people that are homeless, can still both receive those funds regularly and consistently and access them at any time. And certainly from an ideal perspective, you know, what we're at Income Movement, what we are pushing for and promoting is, is just that, um, $2,000 a month for everybody in the country um, until the end of the crisis ideally distributed um, with the, the preloaded debit cards to um, to make sure that, that funds are getting to everybody that needs them. Now, is that going to pass in Congress? No, it's not. I think we have to be realistic. So then where's the fight and how can we make sure that um, that Congress gets as, as much money to as many people at, as regularly as possible? And, and that, that's where the negotiations are happening right now um, in the House for sure. And we're seeing a lot of um, sparring across different, um, different, different, or different people on the aisle um, around what that, how much they're willing to give in all of those areas. So I, I'm I'm going to switch to Diane, but 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 the story yeah. was, um, uh, at my point of view, I mean, what could have been done and, and done quickly was to leave it at the city level. Meaning that the city have good ways to, to know where are the difficulties and try to overcome. I see in New York City, we have a city ID, uh, who is uh, regardless of their, uh, of your, uh, uh, status, immigration status. So, so you could, you, you are already registered. You have, you, you have already a relationship with the city. The city could provide you with, uh, with an income, uh, in, in, and then the federal government could help the city to deal with that story. So I think that will make it uh, in some way more uh, uh, dynamic at the at the city level, and then more realistic about be able to do it, and and for the city to find the fund and find the structure to be able to to one get the money and two to uh, be able to distribute. It. Stacey, you want to respond to that? Because this is a health crisis and an economic crisis, we're kind of facing this uh, something that we haven't really had to in the past, and I think having the health crisis component added in here definitely makes a case for um, a regional distribution model because we like we've been seeing in New York um, and different pockets uh, around the country there's there are regions and cities that are being affected by this in, in disproportionate numbers to other um, parts of the world and the, and the country I think it's 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 why we're seeing some of the protesting that happened last weekend around you know reopen states because there's there's parts of this this country that aren't feeling it in the same way, that aren't having the same experiences, and so um, so certainly when we start to see um, something that is outside of um, humans' hands to a certain degree, as far as kind of the the, the magnitude and, and kind of rapid growth of the of the crisis, I think um, giving the flexibility to be able to respond. Um, have local, uh, you know, local, regional, and state um, governments to be able to respond effectively and get money to people as quickly as possible um, makes sense. Diane, do you want to take on from uh, from the New York City uh, point of view and maybe the action you are uh, covering right now? As far as New York goes, I think you're absolutely right. 
you know, the pro- part of the problem is that, you know, what you're saying is really true. Uh, we could really do a lot locally to, to get cash transfers to people. We have, we, we have, uh, we have a system set up that we could adapt to get money to people in particular in a place like New York city, uh, where we have these other initiatives that are already in existence, like the New York city ID cards we have that you don't have to be, um, a citizen of the United States to get a New York city official ID card and get yourself kind of on the map. to to for delivery of different programs. Right. So this, uh, card just, you know, briefly, like once you're, in the database, you have this card, it's considered an official ID card. Um, and it gets you access to, to some things like, uh, the existing public assistance system it works for, it also works for discounts in a lot of places, things like that. So, um, so yeah, do we have, um, could we do a localized, uh, universal basic income? Absolutely. Uh, politically though, um, the idea that that local politicians are are going to be easier to crack than federal politicians in New York City at this time. Well, I'm not I'm not so convinced of that. Um, though there are rumblings in the New York City Council about doing a a, a universal payment. Um, and in New York City, uh, there's it's certainly more favorable in New York City to getting that universal payment to everyone, regardless of immigration status. So I think that, you know, there's a lot that we could build on. I hope that we we can figure it out. Um, tangibly, I know that uh, in the New York City Council, the Speaker of the New York City Council is interested in uh, universal basic income both federally and at least locally, uh, he's spoken about it. And, um, and there are also, I, I can't speak for every, uh, New York city politician, but I am going to go on record and say that, um, the, 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 uh, city council member for Jackson Heights, Daniel Drum has been talking to me for several years about public assistance and about universal basic income. And we met as recently as this fall, and he is very favorable to figuring it out. He's, you know, he, he's taking it seriously. Um, so, you know, that that's a person that that is really already interested in talking about it and could potentially influence other council members. So, you know, I would say anybody that's in um, Daniel's uh, in, in Danny's um, uh, district should be calling him a lot, you know, and, and asking him to, to influence others and to arrange for the city council to talk about doing a resolution or something like that. Um, the New York city mayor is unlikely to do anything, uh, for all of, you know, who, I, I don't really want to get all into that, but it's unlikely that it will come from him. Um, you know, we've, We've sort of established a pattern, unfortunately, with this administration, uh, you know, whether it be a snowstorm or a pandemic of people waiting too long to take action. And that's, uh, you know, so so it's not going to come from there, although I'm, I, I think that, you know, certainly the mayor should have an opportunity to get on the UBI bandwagon. I think with the mayor, with, with, uh, with de Blasio, the, the way it's going to be was going to be at an international level where it's going to see other countries are starting to do it. He's going to think two times about it. Not necessarily from the base in New York, but I think from the, from the international level, he might going to be start more to understand. I, I know in Spain, it's a big discussion. Podemos is doing a very uh, strong work to, to have it. Uh, some kind of UBI is going to happen in, 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 in some shape over there. Uh, and other countries are in Brazil and then in, in European community, it's also a lot of discussion. So I, I think the Blasio at some point to come back to Jackson, I think it's a very interesting campaign. If we can get, uh, people in Jackson, I in Elmhurst and Corona to, to call Danny's office and having him, uh, work on this, I think that's uh, something very, um, very interesting. He's, yes. And he has a lot of 
power into the, the Progressive Caucus of the City Council and he's on the Finance Committee of the, of the City Council. So he has a lot of yeah. uh, power to, to do a lot of things and he got yeah. some... Yeah, so, so I anticipate, <laughs> I anticipate that, that starting next week, a whole bunch of people will be calling Daniel Drum. Okay. On Jackson Heights' Is it the most diverse, ethnically yeah. diverse neighborhood in all of New York City? Is that the case, David? This is a more diverse uh, district in 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 the whole U.S. and okay, because yeah. of that, they say it's all more diverse uh, uh, zip code in the whole world. So, I mean, right. uh, you know, as 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 the U.S. know about any other country in the world and the diversity of any other country. But yeah, it's 100. He was registered 140 languages at uh, Elmos Hospital, who has been the more devastated hospital uh, connected to the coronavirus. So the, right. the, the cultural aspect of Jackson Eye and Elmos and Corona is very challenging. And it's, uh, it's yeah, but it's a most diverse yeah. Uh, district here. Yeah. So my last question, a little bit for you both, uh, to close this uh, this uh, this show, will be: Do you have any any things you want to plug? Uh, any information that people should know? Sure. So, uh, so right now we are um, in a pretty um, pretty active and um, and critical moment for trying to get um, Congress to include uh, regular payments to people. We know that right now Congress is um, is uh, having discussions about what the next piece of the stimulus will look like. We know that they're focusing on state support and and um, and uh, individual people support right now, and so they are actively at the table negotiating around this. We also know that cash payments to the people is um, is not a very high priority for. Um, for a, a large number of people in Congress. So what we've done is um, uh, income movement and leaders across a, a wide consortium of basic income um, organizations, including Fund for Humanity, uh, Humanity Forward, US Big. We've all come together and created um, a set of actions specifically for the next, um, the next few days as Congress is, um, is deep in the negotiations. We the, the the place to find this is it's the yeah. So you have a website, and then I'm, I will put the URL into into Perfect. the website. So yeah. yeah, that's wonderful. We have a URL with all the actions that citizens can take. So at the grassroots level, what is it that we could all do um, today, tomorrow, Monday, and Tuesday to um, to really uh, impact as much as possible? Send a message to Congress that they need to take this seriously, and it's what the, what the citizens and the people that are living in this country demand. Diane, now it's your turn. Any, any you plug and then we, we wrap it up. Also, the, I want to reiterate the hashtag Congress Pass UBI. So if people can use the Drive for UBI and the Congress Pass UBI. Um, and then the, the other thing I, you know, just want to uh, reemphasize, uh, you know, we've had some really great participation in letter writing um, to do Congress and to the Ways and Means Committee, um, which, as you know, they have a huge um, role to play in the stimulus legislation. So if people can go and, and they can, in addition to doing the drive for UBI, if they could also take a few minutes, it's very easy to write a letter to the Ways and Means Committee. Um, we got a lot of letters out. Uh, Stacy, do you know? I, I'm re not remembering the number, but I think we got really like a jump of we six or seven. Yeah, we we have almost ten thousand letters that were sent. Yeah. To the okay. Yeah. So you know, everybody has a stake um, in in getting those letters out, and uh, income movement made it really easy to participate. So it would be great to see more letters from all the people who need the cash transfers in the stimulus. Thank you very much to you both. Um, that was your show face to face and please keep watching your news on presenza.com and hope to see you uh, very soon. Thank you.